बसमान रहीम आपको एक नए ब्लॉग में वेलकम करते हैं इस वक्त हम जा रहे हैं तोता लैंड की सैर को तोता लैंड क्या है तोता लैंड है यहाँ पर मुशतबा राजा जो कि एक टीन एजर है उसका शौक़ है उसने बहुत सारे तोते पाले हुए हैं और उस तोता लैंड को देखने के लिए जब भी कोई आउटसाइड से गेस्ट आता है नॉर्थ कैरोलिना तो स्पेशली उस तोता लैंड का विज़िट किया जाता है और मुशतबा को बुलाया जाता है कि भाई हमको बताएं कि ये तोते कहाँ से आए क्या इनकी क्या क्या कौन सी नस्ल है कितने में हैं वगैरह वगैरह तो इस वक्त हम पहुँच चुके हैं हमने अपनी गाड़ी को पुल अप कर लिया है और चलें आपको लेकर चलते हैं और बताते हैं कि वहाँ पर कौन कौन से तोते हैं और किस किस रंग और किस किस नस्ल के हैं जैसा कि आप देख सकते हैं यहाँ पर आपको डिफरेंट काइंड्स ऑफ आई मीन डिफरेंट कलर के और डिफरेंट ब्रीड के तोते नज़र आ रहे होंगे ये आप और आपको लोग भी नज़र आ रहे होंगे ये सब विज़िट करने आए हैं यहाँ पर तोता लैंड की यहाँ पर जो तोते हैं वो ओ, कुछ तो आ, हैं वो केज के हैं और कुछ जो है बातें करने वाले हैं आप उन उनको सिखा सकते हैं वो आपसे बातें भी करते हैं और यहाँ इनकी जो प्राइस है आई मीन वो मुशतबा लाइक आई सर इज़ अ टीन एजर बॉय वो इनको रेस भी करते हैं वो इज़ एन एनिमल लवर वो उसके पास ऑल डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ एनिमल्स हैं यहाँ तो जो यहाँ पर हम हैं वहाँ ये सिर्फ तोते ही हैं लेकिन उनके ये जो है उसका दूसरा घर है उसके एक और घर है जिस घर में उसने बहुत मुख्तलि किस्म के एनिमल्स रखे हुए हैं तो यहाँ पर सिर्फ तोते हैं लेकिन जो वही लाइक टू वेज तोता मंकीज डॉग्स कैट्स चिकन गोट्स यू नेम ही हैज तो बहुत ही अलग अलग किस्म के इसके शौक़ हैं ये इनको रेस भी करते हैं सेल भी करते हैं और इन्जॉय भी करते हैं तो चलें आए इन इनसे बात करते हैं क्योंकि इस वक्त वो बिज़ी हैं वो किसी और को इंटरव्यू दे रहे हैं तो मैंने अपनी आ, क्या कहते हैं टर्न का वेट करना है तो जब वो फ्री होंगे तो उस वक्त मैं इनको आपसे आप मिला सकूंगी तो मीन जितना तक वो इंटरव्यू दे रहे हैं आप तोतों की चहचहाट को इन्जॉय करें और आ, अपने कामर्स में बताएँ कि आइए देखें इसमें इस वक्त उनके पास एक ऑलरेडी कस्टमर आ चुके हैं जो कि उन उनसे तो तोता ख़रीद रहे हैं छोटा सा और तो इनकी तोतों की प्राइस रेंज जो है फ्रॉम ट्वेल्व हंड्रेड टू अप टू सिक्स थाउजेंड एंड ओवर है तो अगर आपको तोते चाहिए इनसे ये बर्ड्स वगैरह तो आप इनका नंबर मैं डिस्क्रिप्शन में दे दूँगी आप उनसे रबता कायम करें और ही कैन इवन Um, I think I I believe he can ship it to you, but you can talk to him about it. I don't I don't know the whole process, but uh, he I think he can. But that will be between you and him. So let's just start the process, and uh, he will explain it to you better rather than me. So, but first enjoy these birds, and then we'll talk to him about it. Okay.
Kita bawa dulu. We are at the Tota land of Mustaba Raja where he will be explaining about his birds. So, uh, Mushtaba, would you start explaining to us where did you get them and uh, what what are the breeds and everything? So, in this cage, this is our Australia cage. So, in here we have diamond doves, which originate in the outback in Australia. This one? Yeah, I have approximately 30 in here. They cost about $65 a piece. And then here's a cockatiel. These are also Australian birds. Oh, and wow. I raised these from babies. I have several in here. Yeah, I so, I that. like to provide a... Uh, almost natural environment for them so that way they're able to fly as a bird should instead of well yeah they are flying all over <laughs> so come okay. let me show you here oh you have another one over there this is my large parrot aviary and a lot of these birds here are rescues which is something i enjoy doing as a helping the community and one way to do that is to take senior birds who are no longer uh -huh. compatible with certain individuals into such as this one right here this bird was kept by some individuals who did not know the proper care requirements uh -huh. and because of that they only fed it wild bird food so as you can see the bone in the middle yeah. of it is protruding which means he is severely malnourished uh, and this is very common and when people have birds like this they say we paid so and so for example this one I had to pay fifteen hundred dollars for it which of course isn't bad for an African gray because they sell for about five thousand mm -hmm. dollars but when it's in this condition it's like buying shoes with holes in it <laughs> this is an eclectus parrot uh, they're native to Australia and the Solomon Islands as well and uh, they are sexually dimorphic so females are always red and purple and mm -hmm. males are always green Wow. And uh, they're phenomenal talkers. They're pretty cool, but they require a diet of fresh fruit and vegetables every day. Yeah. They don't eat seeds. They so don't? They'll probably, they probably love Mountain Dew, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. And <laughs> Did you drink it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here we have, these are macaws. Oh, uh, my dream big. ever since I was a little kid was I was going to have one macaw. Huh. And now the... Grace of God, I have, I've had almost 30 macaws up to today. Wow. This is a blue and gold macaw. No, no biting. No. Blue and gold macaw, that is a green wing macaw. And this is a military macaw. All three are the same species, but different subspecies. That causes oh, their different pretty, color. This one is the green one. We have green, red, and blue. Mm. This is an African gray. In total, I have six African grays in this enclosure. Uh -huh. African grays have the best ability. Say hello. Hello. You want Mountain Dew? They're capable of making so many noises. They can sound like a car alarm or a whistle or a dog, and they have the best speech capability of any bird. Oh yeah. And uh, I oh. have about six of those babies right now. I'm pricing them at five to six thousand dollars, depending on the season. Oh. They have about eight babies a year per pair. Wow. I also have about nine uh, Amazons in here. Several different subspecies. Some are called yellow nape or yellow crown, double yellow head, they're blue crown, and uh, sorry, blue front. And I priced those babies starting at $3,000 a piece. I have um, several pairs here, dude, but I do have a waiting list for this year, approximately 35 people. Wow. A lot of people are from New York who are purchasing this species. Yeah. If you can zoom in over there, you see the red, yellow, and blue bird. That's called a all, all of them in the back? Right here in, in front of the nest box. There's two red birds. I have to go on the other Listen side. to this song. Hey, you want Mountain Dew? You have to sing a song. Sing it. No, no, sing the song. 
<laughs> Which song does it sing? She can sing the ABCs and she can whistle. A song. Come, sing! Sing! <laughs> Yo, he's she's not in not, the mood. She's not in the mood to he's sing. He's not in the mood. But when they are in the mood, man, do they talk a lot. Some of these say my name and it's awesome because I didn't raise them. But uh, yeah? my favorite bird has always been a scarlet macaw. That one on top? Yeah, the red, yellow, and blue bird. And as, uh, as long as I can remember, maybe when I was four or five uh, years old, uh -huh. I had my first bird. I, all my photos and my whole lifestyle was based on a scarlet macaw. And now I've had about 10 of them. So uh, my out. dream was always, oh, when I retire, maybe one day I'll get one. But uh, life's too short to wait huh. until I retire. Say, say hello, say hello. You have a long way to retire. <laughs> <laughs> say hello, say hello, say hello. You want Mountain Dew? You want Mountain Dew? Say hello. Say, who's that? Say hello. I guess, I guess uh, he knows that I have a camera in my hand. <laughs> say hello, say hello. Okay, I'm not watching you. If the camera's not here. Yeah, I know, but I think, I think they know. <laughs> they know that I have a camera. Look, he's laughing. He's laughing. Oh. Which one are these? So here we are in a, in a building with AC because these are naturally more cold weather birds and they uh -huh. breed year round from November, December, January, and February. However, in a climate such as this, we are able to control those variables and keep it cold so they breed year round. Uh -huh. And here I have Indian ringneck. These are all from India, Pakistan, and Sri Lanka, so the whole South Asian continent. This a green one? Green, blue, uh, yellow, gray, white. I have every color Indian ring that, that's had, that has been made in captivity. Uh -huh. Yellows are costing me around $2,000, while blue and uh, green are costing me about $1,200. So, I'm, I've, so far this year, I've pulled about 45 babies wow. out of here. And uh, this is the first year breeding. So next year they will do even better by the way. I also have introduced lovebirds to this colony to see how this will change the roles, the uh -huh. internal roles of the Indian ringnecks now that they have to fight off a predator. Lovebirds naturally are predators to other small birds, but now it almost serves a purpose because I've noticed more guarding of the nest. Before, uh -huh. they were not protecting the nest as much, and the babies will get cold. But now that there's another variable in there, they stay in the nest longer, making sure the babies are raised at a, low, a higher temperature. Uh-huh, okay. Which uh, yes. speeds up growth. Uh-huh, go inside. Yeah. But they're they're not pretty because we are in here. Oh, okay, okay. So we call this the color laboratory okay. because I'm introducing different colors of birds, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm doing a lot of genetics work with my professor in this aviary here. Certain embryo transplants in order to get certain genes um, that I, I'd like. For example, when these parrots were first introduced to America about 35 years ago, uh -huh. every single Quaker parrot in the United States was green. Uh -huh. Now, thanks to selective breeding and genetic modification, we have come up with every color, even multiple colors. Animals, yeah, yeah, and yeah, now, let me, let me show you the most beautiful thing ever. So, no, you can say this. If you look closely, those are veins. And you can oh, see yeah. the embryo moving. Oh yeah. You see the heartbeat of a baby inside a cell. Oh my God, yes you can. Yes you can. Yes.
Technology. <laughs> Technology. No. This one is, is this, this is blue, right? Yeah. This one here, I have about, maybe in total I have 40 pairs of birds. Uh -huh. Each pair is supposed to have approximately 8 to 10 babies annually. Uh, so we are looking at about hopefully $5,000 off of each pair at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. So if anyone else is interested in doing any breeding birds or needs advice, tips, or anything other than other thing like that, uh, feel free to message me. My phone is always open, 973-771-9656. Thank you. 973-771-9656. It's about how did all this thing get started? So I grew up in New Jersey in a two-mile town where I walked to school every day. I tell you what, now that I go back there, I was wondering how I was raised there. <laughs> but uh, I, my roots were deeply established there, which I love about that town. It's a small town, big heart. Yeah. However, when I came here, I embraced freedom. Uh, when we say here, it was, we grabbed it by the reins. So my parents said I cannot have any pets. Uh, little did they know I had a gift card for $100. <laughs> and I learned that I could buy chickens online and they'll mail it to my house. So I had $200 from Eve money. I took $100. I, I ordered chicks in the mail. I had $100, now I only have $100 left. I had 100 chickens, and I have two sheds at my house. So I put two chicken, I put 100 chickens in one shed. I raised them for about eight weeks, and I spent $110 from food. I had to ask my sister for $10. That's, that's how times were when I was about 12 years old. And I learned how to butcher the animals, uh, organic, uh, home-processed meat. Yeah. And I sold 100 chickens at $14 a piece. I made $1,400, and I thought I was the richest kid in the world <laughs> at that time. <laughs> and that's how it started. And then I bought a few goats. I realized I could make money doing this, and a few goats turned into buying 400 goats. And uh, okay. it was, it, that's so how long have you been doing it? I've been doing livestock since I moved here. So you can say my whole North Carolina life. So about five years is five years. what uh, my livestock reproduction line looks like. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good luck to you. Thank you. And thank I you. hope uh, you have many more success in life. Thank you. And thank you very much for your uh, information. And don't call me unless you're liking and subscribing. <laughs> thank thank you. you. So Here's our uh, a genetic chart. This is so I can keep track of who I paired with who that hasn't done anything for me yet. And I just keep prices on here on what I paid for what, just so I remember. But usually this place isn't open for public, so she did get a, a VIP look today. But this is just for me to keep track of things. Here is my feed. I go through about 40 bags in uh, probably 28 days. I can go through a pallet of feed. Uh, each bag is costing me $60, so we're looking at about $1,400 a month to feed all these guys. Mm -hmm. And a separate bill here is the sand that we use a substrate in order to catch the odor and to keep sanitation at peak. So that's another expense. <laughs> yeah, well, of course. So. Okay. So that was the end of the conversation with Mushtaba Raja. I hope it helped you. So if you'd like to contact him, the number was mentioned during this uh, uh, video. And please um, like, subscribe, and uh, hit the bell icon so you can have my latest videos on time. And thank you for watching. And please share my video. Allah Hafiz. Enjoy some of his monkey doing? clips. Oh, she's trouble, huh? Our station from MathWorks, creator. That's pretty smart. Oh yeah. Whoa.